With more than 7.5 million student loan borrowers in default and nearly 2 million others seriously behind on their payments, we've got to do something about student loan debt. This is a major, major issue for so many people. And Dan, I'm looking forward to your thoughts on this problem today. You are about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, co-hosts Dan and Tony will explore topics about finance and retirement. It's fun, informative, and most of all useful to those who are interested in retiring successfully. Now, let's begin the show. Hello and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio show with me, Dan Wendell, host of the Dolphin Financial Radio. Alongside me today is Tony Shore, looking like he's sad because he brought up student loan debt oh. and he knows that it's a sad situation for a lot of people. Well, I'm going to look at him and say himself included with a question mark. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I never had student loan debt. Uh, however, my children will. Uh, and that's <laughs> that's the problem. That's the least of their problems. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. My son is a junior in college, and my daughter, who's in high school yet, she's a junior in high school, she's already picking out her favorite colleges and has toured seven schools already. And, of course, uh, her, so far, the one in the lead is the most expensive one we've looked at. So. Isn't that how it, that's just how it works, Tony? You, <laughs> yeah. You got to put the rain on that. I you got to say, this one's not going to be something we look at. Yeah, I want I want you to try to tell my daughter, my middle daughter, uh, anything you tell her that that's not going to work. <laughs> You'll see how that works out for you, Dan. I, you're you're really good at talking with people and you're really good with youth too. But uh, <laughs> I, I'd I'd put my daughter up against anyone. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. I'll tell you what, though. You're right. It is a crisis. Um, maybe. All right. If your daughter could vote for president. Who would she vote for knowing the current candidates? Well, um, she would probably lean toward um, uh, one of the liberals. Um, She's big on women, so I know she really likes, uh, she likes some of the things about Elizabeth Warren, but hates some things about her too, or dislikes strongly, I should say. So I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, that's her decision, but I do know that um, she's not a fan of uh, Trump, and okay. she's not a big fan of a lot of the Democrats. Um, so I don't know. She's having a tough time, I think. Um, Bernie said she loves a lot of what Bernie Sanders said, but I said you have to make sure that you – Look at all the aspects, and you know, like you, I say, Dan, you got to do the math. Well, if you're going to do the math, I would say you're going to be voting for Bernie. <laughs> you got three kids that are going to be in college over the next six years or so. Um, right? You got to you got to vote for the burn. Feel the burn, Tony. <laughs> well, I don't know if we can just go ahead and eliminate uh, student debt or make college free. I, I'm not. You know, I don't think that's a realistic scenario either. Uh, but you're talking about two extreme sides, uh, and I don't like to go toward either one. I'm kind of more of a centrist, but I will tell you that student loan debts obviously are a problem. I mean, the statistics are out there are crazy, aren't they? Yeah, well, it is out of control. The um, I think student loan debt is greater than credit card debt now, and auto loan debt. Yeah. So. That's never been the case. And when uh, I graduated in the 90s, um, 10000 was the average student loan. Now it's like 30000 So it's getting a little bit difficult. I saw the Department of Education put some stat out. They looked at the people that took out a student loan in 2004, and they're, 40% of those are going to default. Yeah. 40%. So- yeah, people are taking out a lot of debt and are not paying it back. Um, and it's a campaign issue, which is why I asked about the who your daughter would vote for. You know, it's a crisis and it should be a campaign issue. Um, and it's probably going to be a big one. 
I think it's a bipartisan issue. I think both sides realize how bad it is. But you're right. Um, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren both have solutions. And Bernie's is to get rid of it all. Forgive all student loan yeah. debt. Uh, yeah, according to Debt.org, before we dig in further, and I and I get your full take on this, Dan, I, I thought I'd let our listeners know what we're talking about here. And Debt.org, they're uh, America's debt help organization and it's a nonprofit nonpartisan uh and they they go with the actual figures total US student debt is 1.4 trillion dollars hmm student debt accrued every second 2858 dollars so bernie's saying he's going to take on or just forgive over a trillion in debt well i guess that not all of that's government debt yeah some of that might be um, private loans it said um yeah i believe that includes both uh federal and private loans even still federal loans are probably over a trillion i mean it's it's just mind-boggling numbers yeah so yeah. federal loans I'll are tell a you big what. chunk of it not all of that is federal loans but um even even that even if it was let, let, let's just say it was about half that that's a right, lot right. of money to come up with. You know what I mean? I mean, we're talking uh, billions. Well, who's going to come up with it? Who's going to come up with it? Well, Dan, I know that uh, I'm sure that uh, they'd knock on your door for a little bump. You know, well, you know, it's just, what is we money. becoming? Uh, are we just going to say that college is an extension of high school now and just every, everything's free or not free taxes, you mm -hmm. know? So uh, my property taxes are going to go to paying for college now because the kids don't know anything graduating high school. It's like. Jeez. Yeah. My dad was an English teacher and that was his big thing. He he hated social promotion. Kids that were being promoted just because they were getting older. But even though they didn't know how to read. Yeah, that's not good. So that's never good. We're just gonna extend it and they're gonna be twenty four by the time they get out of college and, and a school, I should say. High school. I don't know. All I know is if Bernie Sanders has a chance of winning, I am enrolling in the most expensive college I can find. <laughs> That'll take me. I'm going to go full out, 100% loan. Get that master. I'm getting a degree, degree. in whatever, doctorate. anything. I'm going to get a degree in whatever, anything. Yeah. Something, uh, you know, boating. Maybe I'll be a, a naval ship captain and just, you know, <laughs> something. Just take a, take a loan. Teach me something I never I know nothing about and uh, forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, what, what, and just think about this. Oh, I'm, I'm now, if you start forgiving this debt, like Elizabeth Warren also wants to forgive debt, but she's got a sliding scale based on income. Yeah, that's, I think it starts at 50,000 50, forgiveness if you make less than a hundred. Well, again, or what if you make one hundred and one? You you only get yeah, you, tough. you know you get twenty five. So you're going to start promoting people to start looking at income. You're going to start promoting people to to taking on debt. That I mean, people need the problem is, what about the people that already paid off the debt, like me? Well, you know? that's and yeah, you, yeah. See, I don't. That argument is like, hey, that's not fair. I already. Well, don't you want to? It's not. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> sure. You had to pay, and now somebody coming up doesn't. But that's like, hey, I had to go through this painful procedure. Everybody should have to. No, if if I can help other people avoid it, uh, I'm all for that. That's not to me. That's not uh, the best point, but. But I get it. A lot of people want full fairness, and they're like, hey, I had to pay for college. These kids should have to pay for college. But there are already, I read an article, there are already some income-driven repayment plans out there for people. Uh, well, there are, yes. But I know that they're really, from what I've heard, uh, they can be really tricky to get into and easy to fall out of, and income-driven plans uh, can be really confusing and hard to st stay in. I do like the fact that there are income driven plans, you know, if hey, if you if you get out of college and you're not making enough to pay off your student loan, you know, I, I agree with it so somewhat, but again, if you went to school and got um a masters in pottery and now you can't find a job uh to pay off your $125,000 of student loans or 150,000, yeah, you can't get a job in pottery that's going to allow you to pay off a six figure loan. Right? Well, that's just it. So that means you made a poor decision on your choice of what you want to right. learn. And, and I that, agree with and a lot that. of people get a take offense to that. No, you I shouldn't, don't. you should learn whatever you want to learn. No, 
You shouldn't take on, all right, here's an example. Take on a $100,000 debt to become a teacher. You know, that's not fair. Teachers don't make squat in this country. Right. They should. But so so that's not the problem. The problem isn't so much, well, that's a big problem, is people taking on debt to get degrees. They don't know what they're doing. They drop out. They just, they just go to school because they don't know what else to do. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, I'm not going to let you go off of that whole thing that I'm, I'm, that, that's not the same, like the argument that I say it's not fair. It's like <laughs> saying to the, the people that fought, fought in World War II, you know, they, they went over there for freedom and now people are like, oh, you know, giving them a hard time, you know, spitting on them. They could say, they, hey, I fought for you and now you're not appreciative. I could still say that, except I could say, I paid my college loans and you're not. That's not Wait, fair. now you're comparing you can at least give me your... That. Having to Mili- pay student yes, I'm loans. comparing paying student loan to a military feat. Yes, <laughs> someone who had to serve in the World War. Dan, you just dug you yourself know that- a deeper hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, real you're, world you're, problems. You're right. Now, come on. You're you're right. the the changing The changing of a policy is is not something that I agree with you. I agree with you on that. That you can't use that as an argument against it. But I do not like the idea of paying off student loans, not because I don't think that people should have free college. Uh, uh, if that's what you know you want to do, and the country wants to go, that's fine. But who's paying for it? There, it's going to be coming out of higher taxes, oh, yeah. and so it's you know, and and it's going to be it's going to be ridiculously it's going to lessen or cheapen the value of a college education. I think the bigger problem and the place to focus is on the cost of college. Why is it so expensive? And it's because the government backs the loans. If you had the ability to declare bankruptcy on a student loan and it was a private loan, then the private companies would do everything in their power to make it a more reasonable loan and, uh, and come, come to terms. Because right. right now you can't declare bankruptcy on unless you truly loan. have hopelessness. Yep. It's, and so if, and and I saw that uh, DeVos, DeVos, whatever her name is, the this education secretary, uh-huh. I don't even, is it a woman? It is, yep. right? Betty or Betsy? Yeah, or Betsy DeVos. She she said, uh, De- Betsy DeVos, she said that the Department of Ed wasn't meant to be a bank. And I agree with that. Get the government out of this nonsense. If you either you, you make it free and then it becomes just like high school or you privatize the privatize the whole process, privatize the student loan process, let the market handle it. And they'll come up with unique ways, the income share of repayments, percentage of your income. And maybe the, the colleges will have some skin in the game. I'll loan you 100000 and you pay me back once you get a job. Now, think of that. The, the college will do everything in their power to make sure you get a job or else you're not going to pay it back. So all of a sudden, their goal is to make sure you get a job as opposed to just take as much money as they can from you and kick you to the curb you know that's that's where i think the problem lies is the cost is extravagant for college it's outpacing every everything else so we need to stop that madness and i think the first place to start start is to stop backing these loans let the universities and colleges eat it instead of the government yeah i agree you have to look at the cost of education it has a lot of parallels to the problem with health care costs because, exactly. because I'm very upset with healthcare insurance companies for constantly raising the rates and prescription drug companies that the, the cost is going up. But what you do have to look at is the cost. So you have to look at uh, hospitals, doctors, the, the pharmaceuticals. Why is the initial cost so much? Um, exactly. Uh, I, I, I'm still not 100% happy with insurance co- health insurance companies, but uh, I also agree that it's the cost of health care. Why does it have to be so outrageously expensive? Same with the cost of education. Why does a decent edu- college education have to cost so much? I mean, McC- it does McAllister it. in the Twin Cities, my nephew went there. And I think the tuition is a private liberal arts college, uh, very well renowned. Uh, used to be if you graduated with a degree from McAllister, you just walked into any major company and they're like, Oh yes, McAllister, you know, Uh, it's not that way anymore. And, um, but I think the starting yearly was like 65, but then they, they give, you know, obviously they give, um, pretty big scholarships to, to bring that down and grants and things. However, 
Uh, still, that's crazy. And it was still ended up being a crazy amount. And he ended up with a, a philosophy degree. Right. And that's fine. But he's got to realize that you need to pay that loan back. Yeah. And and and, and working you at, should look the at the different he got degrees. Out of college in Potter, he the job he ended up in, a uh, job at uh, the pottery barn. Yeah, it's not gonna. You can't quite <laughs> no. pay off that hundred thousand dollar school loan, you know. Or well, that's because we need to raise the minimum wage at the pottery <laughs> barn so that you could pay off the student loan of two hundred thousand. You know, this is the problem. It's like you need to be you the, the students today. They're too young to be making these decisions, in my opinion. They're just not mature enough, and and the not and when they're, they're making they're huge making the decisions de- in high school a lot of times, right? Or when they're it's still way teenagers. too immature, yeah. And so, but they're making decisions on what they don't even know what degree they're going to be, right? A lot of kids don't even know, right. and I don't blame right. them for not right. knowing. But they're they're spending two hundred thousand, and then they don't like it. It's like now what? You got to be held a lot accountable for that spend. You can't just say, oh, well, that was a bad decision. Yeah, it was. It's the worst decision of your life to date. <laughs> so, you know, so now yeah. the government's going to bail us out and I'm going to bail everyone out mm-hmm. because my, I'm going to pay taxes. I don't like it, Tony. I, and so I'm a big proponent of getting the government out of it and, and letting these these companies that are loaning the money put some pressure on the colleges. And maybe the colleges will step up and start saying, yeah, I guess we need to do something about this instead of spending so much on the yeah. college football team or you know, play, maybe I'm old, getting cranky and old or yeah, something. But, to play devil's uh, advocate, though, uh, I see what you're saying, and it sounds like a great point. However, let's look at what's happened with health. Okay, so health care insurance is privatized right now. But that hasn't helped. Like you're saying, let these private companies give loans and try to keep, you know, maybe they, the private companies, can keep the, get the college costs down or work with colleges to get it down. That hasn't helped it happen in the healthcare industry. The private insurers have not gotten healthcare costs down. Healthcare costs are skyrocketing. Insurance costs are skyrocketing, um, and the government's not involved in it. I mean, now wait before you well, now before it is. you correct now me. Now it is. Uh, sure, there's Medicare, and I think that's thank God we have it. It's kind of a safety net for a lot of folks when they get older. Um, uh, and, and sure there's the, the, um, affordable care act, but it, it's still private insurance companies. It's still, the government isn't controlling the cost of healthcare. They're not controlling the cost really of insurance. They're not, the government isn't insuring it. It's still a private and still blue cross blue shield or whatever it is, you know, um, United health or whatever, uh, they're in, they really are in charge of the health care insurance and the health care. So um, it's private companies, and it's still skyrocketing. So yeah, but, but getting Tony, the government I, I out just, of something doesn't necessarily mean the costs are going to get better. I think so. I think you just got to give it time. And, you know, health care, comparing health care and education doesn't work because health care costs are going up because people are living longer. And and the medicine issue is very different than universities. Why is university, why is the cost of college education going up so rapidly? Healthcare, we could say, people are living longer, people are, are, as a country, we're becoming unhealthy the way we eat. So we're treating these things, and, and it's got to go up. And I can justify that. Now, I just signed up, uh, well, we're at the end of the healthcare uh, open enrollment. Young, a couple in their early fifties. I just got them. They filled out the forms, or whatever, at healthcare.gov. They got a thirteen hundred dollar a month subsidy. Doesn't that sound great? Their cheapest plan still cost them over a hundred dollars. The cheapest plan is over fourteen hundred, like a month. That's crazy. Yeah. But but if the government wasn't there, they would not buy it. And maybe that's sometimes better than having the government subsidize it because then they don't feel the pain. You know, there's and and the government saying that that employers are going to be the the place to get health insurance. No, get rid of that whole thing. Let people pay it themselves. They'll feel the pain. They'll say, wait, we got to do something here. And then, boom, things will change, in my opinion. Same with college. You start you start letting the these people default on loans, let them declare bankruptcy. These loan officers are going to say, you know what? I'm not going to take that risk. They'll stop loaning the money. The kids won't be able to afford to go without the loans. The schools are going to say, wait a sec, why aren't people coming anymore? It's because I can't afford it. Boom. 
But what really is happening is the government's bailing them out. And now parents are bailing them out. More and more parents are coming to me saying, how do I save for retirement? What do I do? And I look and they got student loan debt. I said, that's the first problem. You shouldn't be subsidizing your student's education, your kid, if you can't afford your own retirement. And people just making incorrect decisions and society's letting it happen. And I don't like it. Mm. Yeah. And so I, I, I agree with your question on why does college cost so much? That's a, I don't have that that's answer. That's a good question. I, think it, that, that I agree, though, that that's a question that needs to be answered. So let's say somebody does have a lot of student loan debt. We've talked a lot about the problems and back and forth about our opinions on the problems, but what about solutions? So if you have a client that comes to you, whether it's adults who are co-signed on a loan with their, for their yeah. kids or uh, for themselves, they still have a lot of student loan debt. Uh, what do you recommend to them? Obviously, if it's federal loans, it cannot be uh, refinanced. It cannot be, you can't declare bankruptcy or refinance it. Uh, what do you? Well, you, you might be able to refinance with a private loan, but usually, you know, if you, federal you, and loans you the can. people that could do that have great credit and all that. So they're probably the least problem. You yeah, know, that's they, true. They probably, the you know, um, the people that really need to refinance are the ones that won't be refinanced because the private loans will be like, no way. They won't touch you. Yeah, true. So you got to treat it like any other thing, any other debt. You got to attack it, attack it, attack it. You can't go on these trips. You can't, you can't um, start spending on credit cards. You got to start paying this stuff down. You can't just let it sit because it's just going to get out of control. Unless your strategy is to is to vote for Bernie Sanders and then cross your fingers, then don't, I wouldn't pay any of it back. You know, let it let it balloon. You know, um, and hope he wins. I mean, that's not a good strategy. You got to treat it like a debt. Uh, I would definitely try and refinance if I could. That would be number one. But let's even back up further, Tony. The real strategy here is don't take it on. True. Now, true. You've heard me say before, though. I'd rather you have your student, your son, daughter, take a student loan than you pay for their college. In fact, I'd rather you put money in your own retirement than buy a 529 to pay for your kid's college. And the reason being is because now, of course, there are exceptions to everything, but for the most part, you got to look at yourself, get a retirement analysis and say, am I re ready for retirement? Because you can't take a loan to retire. Your student can take a loan to go to school. And if you add that pressure to the student, oh no, little 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 eighteen year old Johnny's going to be sad because he's got to take the debt and he's going to have that feeling of of hopelessness because he's got a thirty thousand dollar loan. Too bad, that's the price you pay to go to college. So maybe little Johnny will think twice about where he goes because mommy and daddy aren't going to pay for it. I know it sounds harsh, but I think way too many people are putting their kids ahead of themselves and it's perpetuating the problem because what happens if you co-sign on a loan and the student can't get a job because they, they, their degree is terrible or they didn't do well, they fail out, they get a job that's minimum wage and they can't afford to pay it back. You think the loan company is going to say, Oh yeah, they're going to come to you and say, yeah, I see. Yeah. It's tough luck. Too bad. Your son, you know, is a deadbeat. Um, you know what? We're going to, we'll hit him up. We'll leave you alone. No way. You're co-signed. They look at you. You're on the hook. 100%. They don't care. That's a huge decision, a huge thing people fail to realize, and they constantly are making that mistake. I'd rather you have the student put it in their own name, put them through a work program if you have to. Just don't sacrifice your own retirement for your son or daughter's college or grandkids' college. It's just the, the payoff just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yep. Good point. Well, we've covered a lot today. It's a very fascinating topic. And, you know, it's I don't think there are any great answers out there uh, on either side of the fence as far as partisanship. But it really, like you said, it's a bipartisan issue. People want to want to help fix it. Uh, the question is how and we have to fix yeah. it. And the, both both parties, major parties agree that there's something wrong. Um, so I'm all for every type of, of option for giving loans. I'm not a huge fan of it because that's just a wealth redistribution, um, tactic in my opinion, but I get it. You know, I get it. I've had student loan debt. It's not fun. No. 
Um, but I think we need to come up with something better than just forgiving it because that's not going to reduce the cost going forward. It's just like, you know, we're just going to go in the same bad habits, same trajectory. Something's got to change on a more fundamental level. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, before we go, why don't you let our listeners know how they can schedule a no cost, no obligation consultation with you. Talk about where they're at with their finances and how they can get on the right track or where they should be, uh, have a plan in place for retirement. As a true financial planner, I am a big proponent of making the right decisions, analyzing the big picture. If you're thinking about putting money aside for your kid's college or your grandkid's college, and you're thinking, why, Dan just said not to do it, why? It's because I want you to do an analysis of your own retirement first. That is something I'd be happy to do. So you go, call me, we'll go through your situation, and I'll tell you, yeah, you know what? You're in a situation where you could put a little bit of money toward college for your kids or your grandkids. That is a better way to do it than just to do it because you think college is so important. Yes, it is, but your retirement is going to be even more important to you, and you won't realize it until it's too late. The number to call me, 888-508-5935, or go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. Tony, thanks for getting me riled up on a very <laughs> innocuous little you know, topic here. I, I don't know why I'm so upset about it, but I am for some reason. Well, it's a huge problem. All right. Well, hey, uh, great discussion and always good to prompt some thinking about uh, a serious issue and topic like this, especially with how much money is involved for so many people. But great show, Dan, and excellent points. Listeners, that does it for today's episode of Dolphin Financial Radio with our host, Dan Wendell. The topics on this show are wide ranging, yet relevant to people approaching or living in retirement like me. If there is a topic you want to hear on the show, head to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and contact Dan to request your topic or to share your opinion. Dan Mundo or Dolphin Financial Group are not affiliated or endorsed by Social Security or any government agency. Everything discussed on today's show was for informational purpose only. Since everyone's situation is different, some things may not apply to you. The materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources. We cannot be 100% certain that they are accurate. You should really talk to my dad or someone from Dolphin Financial Group before trying to implement these ideas or strategies.